Joe. It's Casey. Yeah, I need some new sneakers. I can meet you at Concepts. All right, yeah, I'll be right there. What's up, everybody? It's Joe from Complex. We're in New York City at Concepts with filmmaker, legendary content creator, and YouTube OG, Casey Neistat. Great to be here. Welcome back. It's good to be back. Going to do some sneaker shopping today. Going to see what he's feeling, what he's not, and then hopefully he's going to buy some sneakers. I'm ready. Let's go. Casey, you know, one picture that I saw a couple weeks ago you tweeted, it was like you in a kitchen, 14 years old, and you're wearing sneakers, but they're duct taped up. What was the deal with the duct tape? You know, I was one of four siblings, one of four kids, parents didn't have any money. And one of the things when I was a kid that was like the most forbidden is name brand shoes. So we would go to like Fava. You remember Fava? Yes, yes, yes. Like maybe pay less by okay. Stop and Shop if we were lucky. But like the budget for new shoes is like $15. Got it. So those were just the bobos of the month that had fallen apart. But you know, Joe, I actually, I, I didn't know you were gonna ask that, but I brought a picture. And it's of me, a tiny version of me. Dapper Adidas. Casey, and then- Adidas? No, no, no. Fadidas. Oh, wait, two stripes, not three. Yeah, Fadidas with an F. Oh, man. Just beaten to hell bobos. But the fit is good. The fit's good. The fit's, the fit's good. Look, I even got the shades. So two stripes, one stripe off. You gotta do what you gotta do back then. Yeah, absolutely. Once I got that paper route, then I got to buy Nikes and real shoes. There we go. And then the picture though of you in the kitchen, you're wearing a Beastie Boys shirt. Mm -hmm. We had an article written by Gary Warnett, RIP, who is like a legendary sneaker writer. And he kind of talked about the Beastie Boys influence on sneaker culture. And they wore Stan Smith's which I know you've been heavy on the Stan Smiths. Yeah. So how much influence did like Beastie Boys have on you? Beastie Boys were kind of, they were like everything. You mm -hmm. know, I'm like a product of the 90s. So yes. it wasn't that first generation of Beastie Boys. It was like Paul's Boutique. Yes. Their greatest and most underrated album mm -hmm. was when I first learned about the Beastie Boys. And then their style was sort of like an evolution of like the 1980s hip hop, like the LL Cool J, yeah. Adidas, Red Jumpsuit. Yes. But they evolved it into something that was, I, I don't know, that kind of spoke to me more. You know, you got like these Jewish white boys from New York City, like Jewish white boy who just wanted to be in New York City. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was all about the Stan Smith. Another shoe I want to talk about on the classic Adidas tip, Adidas Samba, also another shoe that you've been wearing heavy. Big fan of the Samba. And they're now having like a fashion moment. You know, I wore them for like soccer, but they're having like a fashion moment. What do you love about the Sambas? I mean, they're classic. Mm -hmm. You can wear them with anything. And the thing I like about them is I think they're, Sneaker culture has become so like, like you're saying something with your sneakers. Mm -hmm. And there's a few shoes, there's a few pair of sneakers that have such an ambiguity to them that they're just kind of these universal shoes. Yeah. And I think that the Stan Smiths, I think that the Sambas, they all occupy that space. You Definitely. have to think, I just put them on and they work with any fit. You know, 2018 we shot, I think you bought the Akron Prestos, you bought a pair of Off-Whites. I don't see those in the rotation. Are, I, I felt like you were gonna dip, no pun intended, dip your toe into like the hype sneaker craze after our first episode. But I don't know, you went you back know, to like the classics. You know what I bought too, after that. I was like so inspired, I was like, fuck it, I'm a sneaker guy. Yeah. Now. I went and looked up the ultimate shoe that I wanted as a little kid, which was the Nike ACGs. You remember with yes. like the purple neoprene built-in yes. sock? Yes. Those were the ones that I just never got to get as a kid. Those were the ones, yeah. those were the, the fucking, like that was the dream. Yeah. And Nike did a reissue and I bought a pair of those. All right. And they're sitting in my closet next to the three pair from the last time we shot. All right, you gotta bring those all, out. All worn. Okay, all right. Another shoe that you've been wearing a lot that I don't know if you've worn it throughout the years, but like the New Balance, gray New Balances you're on, I think you're on like the 990s, 993s. This thing happened mm -hmm. where I turned 40 and now I'm old. And when I wear like these or I wear like the Sambas every day, my feet get sore as okay. like an old man. 
And this is why I'm like, oh, that's why all my older friends wear running shoes all day. And the 993s are kind of the shoe mm -hmm. that you can just wear. The running shoe that you can wear. You know, the Made in Europe, like they're also them. very style, obviously they're and having like, a style moment. They have been for the past few years. So it's uh, like fashion and function. Yeah, they look great. Yeah. And also anything that says Made in USA on it, it's such a soft spot in my heart. You know, like that American manufacturing, they're incredibly well-made shoes and the style has not changed. No, they're dope. Those are some of my favorite shoes. Casey, I know we talked about the skateboarding sneakers, but you told me that you've never had a Nike SB. That was years ago. Have you finally got a Nike SB? You know, there's a lot of dunks that released since we've talked concepts. The store we're at now did the lobsters, like there was the Ben and Jerry's. Have you got your first pair of Nike SBs or your first pair of Nike SB dunks? You know, no is the answer. Okay. And I've had a great relationship with Nike. I've worked, I've worked with Nike a lot back in the day. Yeah. Certainly one of my most recognizable videos I ever made was a project I did for Nike, mm -hmm. almost 10 years ago now. Yeah, the Make It Count video. Um, fantastic stuff. But all of that really predated them working with the kinds, like they just worked with athletes back right. then. Right. What did you love so much about working with them? Uh, their open-mindedness. Yeah. I mean, the premise of that video, which to date is like one of the most popular videos I've ever made. I made it 10 years ago. I made that video 800 videos ago. Wow. And people still bring it up. Yeah. And the premise was I, I had this three video deal with Nike. Mm -hmm. Like I made one video with like Indomitian Sue and P-Rod and like, okay. like their A-list. Yeah. And then the third video was just kind of, it was supposed to be about this cons. I pitched this thing and then in the end I was like, I don't want to fucking do that. And I called them and I'm like, I'm throwing out the pitch. I'm doing something completely different. And I just kind of stole the whole budget. Wow. And ran around the world until the money ran out. And then made a video out of that. And I remember I handed it in and Nike was like, we love it, Casey but you're not wearing Nikes, mm. and all we see is your Patagonia shirt. Did they blur it? You know, I didn't, no. Okay. Well, they wanted me to. Yeah, of course. And I was like, I know, but like, this, this is, is like, this, this is, is the it. ethos. Yeah. This is it, and they're like, all right, publish it. And it just exploded. That's it awesome. Exploded. And that's what I love about Nike. Casey, it's been well documented, your work with your brother Van and Tom Sachs. You know, the Mars Yard is probably like in my top 10 sneakers of all time. Working with him, do you remember anything about like his approach to footwear or it coming up like, oh, I'm gonna start doing Nikes or anything like that? The answer to that question is no, but the story of how my brother Van and I started working with him, which has nothing to do with shoes, okay. but is still relevant here. And when I first moved to New York City, it's like 2001. Mm -hmm. I was a bike messenger and I heard about this like this artist guy in Chinatown who had a $10 bounty for those big New York City police line do not cross barricades. He okay. would make his art out of them. Okay. And he was offering 10 bucks per. And the next day I showed up with like a hand cart with like 20 of them. And I like got that on the subway and I rolled up to his studio and I was like, yo, you the guy paying for yeah, these? Yeah. And th and he was just like, how'd you get those? And I was like, you paying me or what? Yeah. And he's like, you want a job? And that's the origin story. Wow. Of how that relationship came to be. And then I think we were talking about this. This is his. This is the new, new, the new general, one. The general purpose shoe, which he wants to make as accessible as possible. He wants to constantly restock them. The price point's low. He was selling them in Kohl's. What do you think about like the general purpose shoe? I think it's like perfect. Yeah. It's perfect. Because I think there's a lot of people like me who like to beat on their shoes. Like I buy shoes to, to wear them. Yeah. I don't own a clean pair of shoes. Mm. So the fact that they're sort of designed and marketed for that, I think is what really has made this successful. Yeah. It's refreshing, but it also is very true to everything that Tom does. Awesome. We talked about Nike, we talked about Make It Count, but I know you visited Nike. How many times did you visit Nike? And is there a story that you know, I think because back in the day, like I said, you were you were running and gunning. Is there a story from like the Nike campus that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, so before I ever worked with Nike in a formal level, back when Van and I were just kind of hustlers, my brother Van and I were hustlers. Yeah. We made fake Nike commercials. Mm. We would make Nike commercials, put them on our website, pre-YouTube, okay. put them on our website, put the Nike swoosh after it, and just pretend yeah. they were Nike commercials. Wow. And then I remember eventually, years later, when Nike called me and was like, we'd love to have you out here to talk about working together. They're, I was like, great. Yeah. They're like, sure, they'll send you a ticket. And they send me a ticket. And I remember looking at it, it was the first time 
I had ever flown business class. It was the first time okay. I had ever held a ticket that said business on it. All right. And I was like, fuck. Yeah, you made this it. Must, yeah, you made it. This must be it. Like, yeah. they must mean it. Yeah. And that really stuck out. I mean, I remember, like, getting to Portland, because they're in Beaverton, just yep. outside of Portland. Yep. I remember to get, checking into the hotel and going up to the hotel room and on the bed, were three pair of Nikes. Oh, nice. In my size, wow. and they never asked my size. Oh, okay. You know, and it's like Nike's got style. Yeah. All the way through, they've got style. Yeah. Now, working with them was absolutely like a benchmark in my career. Amazing. Listen, well, we talked about everything. Now's the easy part. Browse the shelves, see what you're going to take home. Fantastic. Let's do it. Casey, what are we checking out? I mean, I kinda... Wanna go with the Teddies? Yeah, these 990s, I just, I think I gotta. You gotta, what size are you? you 11 good? and a half? Got you. Gonna be a new one? Yeah, these are the ones with the... Yep, there you go, yep. you already know it, that Velcro. I'll wear these exactly once before they turn black. That, I gotta do it. That's fine, that's fine. We're gonna take care it. of you in these as well. I gotta do it. Got you. These are a little loud, but I think are these the ones that I picked up? Those are them, yeah, those are that. I think I got it. We'll do these in 11 and a half, all right? Yeah, let's Actually, go. Also, I want to let you know that we heard about Tom. I'm going to be giving you a little early access to that general purpose show, all right? Appreciate it. I My appreciate God. it. Hey, Casey, you find everything you need today? I found everything I need. Thank you so much, Leslie. You're welcome. Beep. So Beep. your total is going to be $708.80. Leslie, thank you so much. Have a good one, Casey. Thanks, bye. So, Casey came through. Thanks so much for taking the time. Welcome back to New York City. So good to be back. You know where to find him, Casey Neistat, YouTube. Appreciate it. All right, I gotta go change my shoes. Let's do it. Let's go.